Hi, my name is Alex Dolphin, and welcome back to another episode of Ex Ante. Today, we're going to compare and contrast legal formalism and legal realism. So to start off, let's jump into legal formalism. So legal formalism is this idea that law is rationally determinate. Law is a logical framework, and if we apply it to the facts as judges, if the judges apply the law to the facts, they will all get to the same outcome. Um, it's this idea that there are legal principles that will guide judges in their analysis. And because those legal principles are um, independent and determinate and they have nothing to do with the, um, with the judge herself, um, those legal principles will lead the judge to a rationally determinate answer. So all judges applying the same law should get to the same answer it is a premise of legal formalism. Um, judges apply uncontroversial legal principles to the facts. There's also this other idea that judges are finding the law. They're not making the law. And this was especially relevant in the common law, uh, especially in England, where it was just common law, is that you know, the judges were finding the law. They weren't making the law. The law is this body of, of legal principles that exists independent of the judges. Um, so there's this separation between judges and the law, and it's the job of the judges to apply that law. Um, there's a platonic aspect to the law. So let me describe that a little bit. Plato had this theory. Um, it was called the theory of the forms, the realm of the forms. And what that means is that each physical object has a non-physical counterpart in the realm of the forms, right? So there's a perfect version of everything on the planet Earth. So this chair that I'm sitting in, there might be a perfect version of this chair in the realm of the forms. And this chair is just an imperfect one, but it's participating um, in this you know, eternal, um, uh, non-physical uh, non realm of the forms. So there's this idea that the law um, exists in this non-physical realm of the forms. It exists independent from mankind, and it's judges' jobs to find these uncontroversial principles of the law um, when they're adjudicating. And once you find that, you will uh, essentially you'll be able to best do your job as a judge and apply the law. But there's this idea that the law is separate from the judges. It's worth noting that um, Justice Scalia had an idea of democratic formalism. What this says is, you know, we should apply the original meaning of the Constitution. And if we do that, then that will lead us to rationally determinate answers because one, we'll be able to find the original meaning of the Constitution. And then two, if we can find that as judges, then it should always lead us to a decisive um, outcome. And so that's the argument of Justice Scalia. Um, there's been people that argue against that, saying that it's hard to find the original meaning of a document. So if you can't find the original meaning, then it's hard to really have this formalistic system um, of constitutional law. But that's his premise. Um, so legal real realism is the antithesis to legal formalism. Um, it's an honest account of what judges really do. Judges are human and they're motivated by personal political views. So a few of the people that were um, heads of this school of thought uh, is Oliver Wendell Holmes. He's got the awesome mustache right there. And then Carl Llewellyn, um, he's there with the book in the bottom right. Um, is this idea that you know law is policy making, and they reject this idea of legal formalism that the law is separate from the judge. Say so, no, the judge is making the law, um, especially in the common law. The judge is making the law. It's not that there's some you know effervescent uh, uh, ethereal form of the law that the judges are divining. No, they're just making the law. That's what judges do, and you know it's a more practical, it's more scientific um, approach to what judges are actually doing. Um, when they're ruling on cases. This is a, a normative view, not really, uh, it, it, excuse me, it's a descriptive view uh, of the law. Um, it's saying that, you know, this is what's really happening. You know, it might be good to think that there's some effervescent body of the law, but what's really happening is the judges are, um, are just creating the law and they're making policy. So to illustrate the difference between these two, um, let's talk about a, a fact scenario. So Congress, uh, perhaps not this Congress, but perhaps a future Congress, finds that compulsive TikTok usage is substantially affecting interstate commerce because people are watching TikTok and are not working and contributing to the economy. So Congress limits TikTok usage to one hour per day. Um, like a big brother, like a parent, they say each person can only use TikTok for one hour per day. So, uh, and this statute is challenged and is brought to the Supreme Court. 
And the court rules in favor of Congress's regulation of TikTok usage, right? So the formalist might describe this by saying, you know, we know that Congress has the ability to regulate activities that substantially affect interstate commerce. Congress found that compulsive TikTok usage has an impact on, on interstate commerce. So TikTok usage substantially affects interstate commerce and Congress's statute is valid. So that would be like the formalistic approach. You know, there is this body of common law interpretation of the Commerce Clause. We're just going to apply that body of the law to this fact scenario. And hey, it leads us to this conclusion that, yeah, Congress can regulate TikTok usage. Now, the realist. What might the realist say? Well, the Supreme Court is 6-3 for Republicans right now, Republican appointed justices. Um, there's six of them. And they don't like TikTok because it's a Chinese communist company. Um, and so the justices ruling was really motivated by political animus and what they believe would be the best public policy, which would be to regulate TikTok usage. Um, and so that would be the realist approach. You see, it's more descriptive. Um, and the formalist approach would be, no, we're just applying the law. And I think that um, we ought to be hesitant to get too far into the realist realm and always be skeptical of judges and what they are doing. Although I do think that it is definitely, uh, it is worthwhile to open our eyes to the reality that sometimes judges are motivated by political interests, public policy interests. Um, I think that it's better for us to not be skeptical and better for us to believe that judges actually do take this formalistic um, approach to interpreting and applying uh, the law. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Bye-bye.